Welcome everybody to another Community Sunday and uh, we're excited about the topic today and I want to begin before I get into a story from the Bible by asking this question. Have you ever felt limited? Have you ever felt labeled or confined like there was a lid on what you could do or who you could become? Maybe the limitations of the lid came from yourself or from the way that you were raised, from the words that were spoken to you when you were growing up, from the culture that you were raised in and the social environment that you were a part of that limited you, that labeled you, that said you can only go this far, you can only become this level of a success, whatever that is. And that leads me up to uh, a person in the Bible that I want to talk about by the name of Jabez. And what's interesting about Jabez is he he's not described in any other part of the Bible other than in this portion of scripture in the book of First Chronicles. In a part of the Bible that most of us go to sleep when we're reading, and that is the genealogy. So-and-so was the father of so-and-so, and, and he had these sons, and on and on. And in this portion of the Bible, in this genealogy that is given, someone said there was 600 names given, and it's just one after the other after the other. But the writer of First Chronicles chapter 4, when he comes... To the man Jabez, he doesn't just give his name, he stops and he begins to tell his story because it is so notable. And, and it begins like this, it says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. Now if we just stop there, and there's only two verses to this story, but it begins with, a paradox, really, a contradiction that that there's this man Jabez and he's more honorable, he's more weighty, he's more important than his brothers. But then it talks about his mother and his name. His mother named him Jabez, which actually means pain or sorrow or misery. And she called him Jabez because she bore him in pain. She had pain in her life. Maybe it was the delivery or maybe it was the events that surrounded her life, but, but she laid on this young baby boy a label. She called him pain. She called him sorrow. He wore this pain. It was his mother's pain, but the baby wore the label. And that sometimes happens to people. There's things like, or things people call a generational curse where, where, you know, there's alcoholism in the parents and the grandparents and there'll be alcoholism in the children. There, there'll be poverty in the, ch in the parents and there'll be poverty in the children. A, a, a label is given, a prediction is given. And in the, in the Bible, this is even more true because people would name their children by what they were predicting their life to be. And the mother was in sorrow and the mother was in pain. And so she called this baby boy pain and sorrow. And it hung upon his life as a label, as a lid, as a prediction of his future. He will have pain. He will have sorrow. But something happened. Something broke the lid. Something broke the barrier. Because it starts by saying that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. He was more important. He was more successful despite the prediction, despite the label. And we're gonna see how that happened because if we read the next verse, and there's only two verses to his story, but it's, it's powerful. It says, and Jabez called on the God of Israel. That's the first thing that Jabez did. 
Jabez took this to God. He said, I have this as a prediction over my life, but God, I'm bringing this to you because I'm not accepting this. I'm not believing this. I'm not going to allow this to be the determining factor of my life. I'm asking God for you to intervene. And I believe that's what every one of us have to do when we feel like we have a label that we placed upon our own life or other people have placed on us. We take it to God and, and, and it's, this is what it says Jabez prayed. And he prayed four things. He made four requests. He said, oh, that you would bless me indeed. God, I want you to bless me indeed. When he adds indeed, it means a lot or emphatically. I want you to bless me a lot. Now he's not praying for material things. He's not praying for houses or cars or money. He's praying for divine favor. Much like what, what was on Joseph's life when he was sold as a slave to Potiphar's house and Potiphar said, Everything that Joseph did prospered in his hand. It didn't prosper in his hand because he was a genius. It didn't prosper in his hand because he was more gifted than everyone else. It prospered because God's hand was upon him. Like Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, the blessing of God was upon them. Let me tell you, when you pray for God to bless you and you leave the kind of blessing that he blesses you up to God and not you, God is able to bless your life in ways that will break the lid off your life, that will break the barriers in your life. But he didn't stop there. That was his first request. But he went on to say, it's the second request, and enlarge my territory. Now maybe to a Jewish person, the territory is his promised land. But the promised land is symbolic and in a picture of Jesus Christ to us. And when we pray that our territory or our borders would be extended or enlarged, we're praying for more of Jesus, more of his ministry, more of his influence to uh, be enlarged in our life. We're, we're saying, or I would be praying as a pastor, God, I want the church that you've caused me uh, called me to pastor, to be enlarged. I want the numbers of people that I'm preaching to and that are getting saved to be enlarged. I'm praying that you would enlarge my territory. I believe that, that any one of us can pray that prayer. That Eric concerning Kids Point could pray that prayer or Dan Phillips concerning youth could pray that prayer. To God, enlarge my ministry, enlarge the ministry that you have given me. Enlarge, Lord, the, the, the capacity of Jesus Christ and his ministry in my life. I believe that that could break the lid off your life. The third thing that he prayed for was your hand would be with me. Your hand would be, be with me. Can I tell you that if you're going to pray for the blessing of God to be on you and, and for you to have an enlarged territory in Jesus Christ, you had better pray for his hand to be with you. What Jabez was, was saying is, Lord, I can't handle this by myself. I can't do this on my own. Whatever you're going to give me, whatever you're going to enlarge in my life, however you're going to bless me, I cannot manage this on my own. I'm going to need your power. I'm going to need your wisdom. I'm going to need your anointing. I'm going to need your guidance. I'm going to need you to direct my life. Lord, don't leave me alone. Come alongside me and help me to fulfill what you are placing in my life. Let your hand be with me. And then the fourth thing that he prayed, maybe the most important of, of all the things that he requested, he said, and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. He said that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. Remember, pain was his name, that I may not be Jabez, that I may not be the label that was given to me, that I may not be the person that people predict I will be. And the only thing that can ruin and destroy 
that is if God w would allow him to run into evil. You can imagine if God's going to bless him or if God's going to enlarge his territory and, and, and God's hand is going to be upon him and empower him. You can imagine how evil will lift its ugly head. I've known many who have had expanded ministries in their life, preachers who have fallen because of evil. And Jabez knew the danger of the blessing of God upon his life and the, the opportunities for sin that that was going to create. And so he prayed, God, keep me from evil. I don't want to cause pain. I don't want to cause pain for myself. I don't want to cause pain in other people's lives. And I don't want to cause grief and pain to the Lord. Amen. And then the Bible says this, which is incredible. And God granted him what he requested. Wow. God gave him what he asked for. You know why? Because number one, God wants to bless us. And he was praying according to the will of God. God does want to enlarge what he is in our life into something larger. He wants us to grow into something that has more power and more influence. He wants his hand to be upon us and he wants to keep us from evil. We are praying what the Lord wants us to pray. And if we pray it fervently and we pray it consistently and we pray it with faith in our heart that he will do it, God will also grant our request. And this is why Jabez broke the boundaries while he busted open the lid that was placed on his life because God granted the request to, to the prayer that he prayed. The reason I'm telling you this, the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I know we all have limitations that we placed on ourselves, and sometimes they're the limitations that our parents have placed on us or our culture or our social economic level or education or, or, or the failures that we've had in our life, sometimes they place on our life these limitations. And I'm here to tell you that if you can pray these four things, I believe God can answer your prayer and break the lid off your life. I prepared some questions for you that go along with this story of Jabez. And I believe that as your facilitator works through them, that um, you too can pray this prayer of Jabez and see God work miraculously in your life in blessing you, enlarging your territory, his hand being upon you, being kept by evil, from evil so that you do not cause pain and God causing to come out in your life something that you and the people around you never expected because I believe God can grant your request just like he did Jabez. God bless you today. Thank you for these few minutes of time. And I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon in community.